there, welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited to uh, show you this next chat because I've been, uh, the first time I met Delta Goodrum was in the uh, the lobby or the foyer here at the iHeart Radio station and she was just glowing. I, I was astounded. I was like, i got to have a photo with her. So I went up, asked for a photo. She's like, yeah, of course. We took this photo. Then I went home. I showed my friends. Everyone was jealous and I got to have a cheesy grin on my face because I got a pic with Delta Goodrum. Now that was like five years ago. I uh, haven't seen her since, haven't talked to her since, and boom, she was on the phone this week, we got her on the show, and she was an awesome chat, it was actually such a random chat, we talked about her childhood, we talked about new music, her tours, artificial intelligence, Harry Potter, I mean, whatever you think can possibly be spoken about, we probably have it in this chat, so hope you enjoy it, and yeah, Delta Goodrum, she's a legend, check this. Dude, I was born to try. First off, I need to relieve all the men of Australia and just confirm that you are not married. It didn't happen. It's a fake news story <laughs> and that there still may be a chance. Yeah, I'm not married, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then not, not to mention, I mean, I thought it was quite funny this week, the fact that I would be getting married at The Voice. Yeah, the that's right. I thought, well... Well, they've had me in Hawaii and all these other places. This seems like a unique choice to marry me at. <laughs> That's right. You seem very happy, though. You seem like you're in a really happy place. Well, I mean, in the sense that there's new music and it's a new era and we've had an amazing season of The Voice and, you know, I'm, I've got a... Yeah, I am, of course. I feel, I feel really happy. Besides the gravity of worrying about the world, I'm extremely happy. <laughs> what worries you about the world, though? I mean, it is in a really crazy place, but what particularly for you is, is the most worrying part of it all? Well, I think I just worry for people's health at all times, of course. Like, mm. I think that making sure that those incredible nurses and doctors and just making sure we are we are all doing our part but just just in that sense i guess is the gravity of it all but you know we're doing we're doing really well and i think that that's um that's something to be proud of as australians 100 percent, yeah i'm pretty proud of that as well um and obviously this tour and uh it is it's just been announced which is which is awesome i think that's incredible because it is a, ma a major sort of uh step forward for uh the australian music uh community a even for the country knowing that we now have something to look forward to that is not just sitting in front of a screen and watching you perform live on a screen. You know what I mean? So that was my um, that was my hope. Is that I, I do truly believe that you have to have things to look forward to in a challenging time. Mm. And in my mentality, I thought, right, well, we worked closely with the venues. I had originally, like all of us, had different plans this year. You know, we all yeah. we all had our plans. We all had our this is what 2020 looks like. And as fate would have it, you know, the thing you do know in life is that things can change. And so when we started to look at the venues and they advised that this looks like when we can, when it looks like it'd be the best timing, I was like, right, I'm going first. I'm going to have something to look forward to for all of us mm. and believe that and that we're all going to be together in that room singing the songs we love. And if not, everyone can have a metre and a half to have their own dance space. Yeah, that's that. good. <laughs> that's great. That's all you need, a metre and a half of, of a square metre and a half, you'd be set. Like, that's all you need. <laughs> I love Imagine it. Imagine you got that at every concert where you're like, okay, well, I've got a full 1.5 meters that I can do spins on the spot. Yes, I'll be doing backflips. I mean, I'll be I'll be attempting to do backflips, but can you do a, can you do a backflip? Have you ever tried to do a backflip? Uh, I, well, I love a good cartwheel or a round off. Okay, round off, yeah. Really I did do springboard diving, though, growing up, so I did kind of do a couple of those. Oh, spring... I learned a couple of tricks back then. So what, is that like where you, you jump off the off the, the, the springboard into the into the water? Is that what into that is? Into the pool, yeah. Holy reason, crap. I really loved that growing up. It wasn't like my main sport. I was a bit more basketball than I was um, that. Ah. But, but, I, but that was the only time I tried to backflip was in... Um, Springboard diving. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. Now, obviously, you got this uh, song, Paralyzed, which, well, well, the good thing is that maybe the reason why you stopped doing the springboard diving is that you could have ended <laughs> up paralyzed. I, thought, I, didn't, that did, I didn't even mean that to segue, but that was great. Gosh. Wow. That was, I, don't know, I don't know if I'd put that one. Um, <laughs> pa paralyzed is definitely about, it's a, the metaphor for when your entire world stops and has to be reset. Yeah. It's about when you're just completely frozen and you have to, 
reset the clocks and and take take a moment to um, find the little strength inside to to get through it. Yeah, I love that. It's a, it's a great concept. It's such a powerful, uh, moving um, vibe this song has, which we're going to play a little bit later on. But um, firstly, I need to I need to find out because I saw somewhere that it said that you've been able to share stories that you never thought you were able to share in music in the in these new releases that's coming out. Why have you waited so long to share these these stories? And what are these stories that we're talking about here? Well, I think there's so much to share. I mean, at the same time, I, I believe some people, you know, might think that I've uh, in different records, you get to know different chapters. But I really took a moment to go back to basics and just sit at my piano and try to like talk about my perspective from now. Like, how do I see my journey from from right now looking back? Like, how do I see what's my perception of like from the very start? How do I feel about like my my life, the different twists and turns. And I really kind of did a deep dive into going, all right, these are the things that, that I want to talk about now as a woman. Wow, I love that. And so you, you sort of found a, a real uh, you know positive point of, of clarity, I guess, in your life. Is that right? Yeah, and it, it doesn't have to all be positive as well. I think that there's some just some real truths in there. And the record's about telling maybe stories that I might have, you know, probably protected along the way or just, you know, just new layers that it was time to sort of, Share and, and get a bit more uh, real and raw about and say, well, you know what, in this chapter, this is what I was thinking. Wow. And just kind of go through... Yeah, because you, you obviously you, you started into in, in the music industry at, a, at obviously a young age. You were a teenager when you when you basically started in it. So I'd imagine throughout the years that you've you've obviously built up, you've grown, and you've you've come to a sense of maturity in the game. And uh, you would have so many you know behind the scenes stories. You'd have so many different so experiences, many. traveling around the world, all that stuff. What's one of the ones? What's one of the experiences that you can share with us right now? Oh, goodness. I wouldn't know where to start. It depends in which... It depends on which part of my life you'd want to go into. Mm. I mean, you know, it, it, that, and that's the part about writing. I had to sort of go, all right, I literally started at the start and was like, okay, but let's go from the very start here and, and go up till now. But one of the stories, I mean, you know, even my chapters at The Voice, the amount of, the amount of um, experiences I've had from that show and... Yeah, that's, I, don't, I wouldn't know where to start. Actually, <laughs> would be one of your. <laughs> you reckon? You reckon you could like have a have like write a book or something one day? Would you do something like that? Oh, definitely. That'd definitely. be great. That'd be great. What would you call your book though? Because you'd have to. Because you'd always come up with some. You'd come up with some crazy, you know, concepts and titles. The Delta, like, would it be Delta Goodrum? The story. Like, it couldn't be something like lame like that. It's got to be like, you know, like real <laughs> special. <laughs> Um, it, well, I appreciate that. I'm up open for suggestions if you have any. Mm, Delta Goodrum, um, the, <laughs> the real story. No, <laughs> it doesn't really, work. Yeah. It doesn't work. I like the, maybe just Delta Goodrum. Maybe that just works. That's just powerful enough. Delta. It just works. <laughs> Del- maybe we just, I mean, the fact that people still use my last name is pretty funny when they'll say Delta Goodrum. I'm like, you know, I don't get called my full name at all times. <laughs> and then when you do an interview, they're like, Delta Goodrum. I'm like, that's, that's me. <laughs> that's, oh, but you see, that's the thing. Your brand is so strong. Your your image, your brand is so strong. They just call you Delta Goodrum. You, you can't, you, yeah. you, it doesn't make sense calling you Delta. It doesn't, but I know that's it's true. weird. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you want us to call you Delta or what do you want us to call you? No, you can call me whatever you want at this point. You can call me Delta or Delta Goodrum. Tell uh, me my middle name. Is my middle name is Lee. Delta Lee Goodrum. Delta Lee Goodrum. Wow. Okay, yeah. I like that. My middle name is my middle name is Edward and, and I've I, I was embarrassed as a kid about that name because I don't know. I just felt like it was a real old and like lame name. My, my, my so obviously first name Key and last name Oliver, and my middle name was Edwin. And it just kind of King felt Edward like it didn't. Oliver. Yeah, it felt like it didn't fit in. But then as I got, got on, I thought I could make it's it work. Like, I could like it, yeah. It sounds pretty. Like now that I look back, I'm like, well, that's it's actually a pretty pretty powerful name. Like I I would even go as far to like put the <laughs> Sir in front of it because like Sir Key and Edward. Like the, now that sounds like yes, royalty. That's strong. Strong. Mm. That is strong. Thank so you. So, Keen Edward Oliver. Keen I mean, it Edward. does sound like you're a royal. You're from the royal family. Well, you know, I, I might have some ties to it, you know, way back, but you know, I guess we all might as well. <laughs> you don't know. You, don't you know, know what? This I when I learned that um the last person to uh, I think was living in Elvis's house or something was a lady called Delta May. I was like, oh, 
Maybe I'm related to Elvis. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, man. This is Delta May. Delta May. Did you hear about Elvis's uh, grandson the other day? I think he, um, I think it was a sui- oh. like he committed suicide or something, 27 years old. Oh, so Did you hear about that? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, that, I think I heard something. Yeah. That's crazy. That's that so is just insane. It's insane. Uh, also, as well, the, the, the whole conspiracy theory about Elvis. Is he alive? Is he still not alive? Does he have a twin? Does he not? What, what is your thoughts on that? Because that's the, I don't even know where to start with that stuff. I, I, I mean, uh, I don't know if I have like a... Um, no, I, I haven't really thought that, that, but I mean, if he is around kicking it, then, then all power to him, but I'm pretty sure he's watching us from above. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. And if he is, that's... that's, that's but I do remember I did go and actually visit my... I did actually get to go visit Graceland when I was... Um, that's how I found out about his Aunt Delta um, when, when I was a kid, because I really loved the music. Mm. And all the Elvis movies, so cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, I don't know how we ended up in Elvis, but it always happens with me. It is, it always happens. I just, I just go with the flow. I, I actually, I do want to, I do want to touch on this because I think this is very important. Okay. That um, you were invited by Lady Gaga to co-perform at that uh, One yes. World Global Citizen thing. Um, yes. How did that invite? What an experience. What that would have been crazy. But first, how did that invite come? Like it wouldn't have come via the mail, obviously. Was it? How did it all? How did that come together right at the start? It came by an owl. It flew an owl. into the uh, <laughs> came by Harry Potter style. Now I was invited by the Global Citizen team, and truthfully, it was it was the first. You know, we'd all just gone into lock, and it was, I didn't even know how to do these videos from my home. I was completely just knew that I wanted to to, to help and send love through music, and mm. I was honoured to be the only Australian on it. And it was an incredible moment where the world came together through music and music is such an important part of challenging times as well and so um it was a really it was a really um really special uh part to be to to be a part of yeah that's right i do like the the you know the owl harry potter story better i think that one was that's what (laughs) that's what i might use um i think that's much better (laughs) (laughs) you know that's how they invited all the artists around the world they said yeah they send owls out you know what i I, you know it's as as crazy as 2020's Don't ask me been. Why that came to my head first? You know, maybe, maybe because it was Harry Potter or the actor Daniel's uh, birthday this week, so that could be. Is that right? Yeah, so it could be that. I'm not sure if you you saw it anywhere or you wished him happy birthday. <laughs> no. You sent him a little no, owl with a little happy birthday note. I did, I did, yeah, I did. Great. Actually, my owl carried a cake, you know, carried a full <laughs> cake with the oh, candles. Shit. You know, it's funny. I've actually been going through and rewatching the whole Harry Potter thing. I, I just, I, I don't know. I just can't get over it. I think it, I think it's great. Um, are you, are you a big fan? Best. Yeah, okay. I love it. I love it. I love the imagination. You know, it's. A, I love the. Uh, I loved it. Like you know, it's great. A hundred percent. I have to. I have to be honest though. I I don't like the first three. I think the first three movies are just. I know they set up the story really well, but it's just it's too kid like for me. You know what I mean? Oh, like but, it's, it's. No, but that that was the beauty in growing yeah. up with Harry Potter. You watched them at each stage as you grew up, yeah, and then I guess as so. we got kind of into the right age group, they can be a bit scarier for us all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess so. I yeah. don't like scary movies anyway. So you don't? I'm, I'm happy with the first three. You don't like no. scary movies? Why? No. No, I'm, I'm happy with Disney, thank you. Oh, wow. So, wait, so you've never <laughs> caught up, like, you've never, like, you know, you and you and your partner, is Matt, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you and Matt have never, like, gone and watched a scary movie together. That's like that's like 101 dating thing to do, like... <laughs> I'm just not a very big scary movie uh, person. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm way too sensitive. I'm oh, like, wow. oh my god, traumatized. No, not for me. Okay, no, I like comedies. You Give like me comedy. comedies every day of the week. Ah. Yeah, that's my. I'm, I'm a, I love to have a good laugh. That's it. Fair enough. I love that too. I think that's dope. Okay, yeah. so um, uh, look, I just wanted to obviously say congratulations on the on the new song, on the tour that's happening. Um, and we're going to play the track right now, Paralyze. Uh, when we do get back, Delta, though, I do have a listener question for you. Um, we've put out a question, uh, like seven 
billion people. Okay, not seven billion people. That's the whole world. But a lot of people did did send in questions, and uh, we've hand selected one that we think would be pretty cool for you to answer. So, um, are you cool okay, to hang out? No problem. Welcome back. It's the Yaha Radio Countdown. Keen hanging out with you now. Delta Goodrum on the line. Uh, her new song, Paralyzed, is available right now. And she's on tour. Yes, she has taken the step forward. Uh, lead the way, Delta. Lead the way. Uh, she's, uh, what? <laughs> so you, what, your tour is happening April next year, I'm seeing April, here. April, May next year. Yeah, April, 2021. May. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, yes, uh, on, on the ticket, it will say you will have 1.5 metres square of distance to be able to do backflips <laughs> and dance and stuff. <laughs> Just yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We had to change it, but no, no. At the <laughs> moment, I'm uh, I'm living in hope that we're all going to be together, playing all the songs you know through the years and all the new records. Oh, I love it. I love it. I can't wait for it. That's going to be something special. Although, uh, trying to do a backflip to a slow ballad like Paralyzed, I'm not sure if that's going to work. So, there's a di- well, it's a different vibe for Paralyzed. That's for sure. That's I think true. Paralyzed is meant to be kind of a little bit flashbacky. Yeah. A little bit was inspired by Beatles and and inspired by that sort of that swing mm. um, with like the slapback uh, sound on the rate on the on the vocals and you know when I was producing it, I was definitely very in- inspired by different eras again. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so we have a listener question for you right now. I think it's important just to brace yourself and really, because I think on the on the whole point of you going back, resetting, um, I think this question would relate really well to you, and it's by a listener called Tash. Now, she's asked you, Delta, what thing did you do as a kid which you now look back on it as this is super weird? Super weird. Like super um, weird. Like something you did as a kid where you're like, oh, this was like, obviously you just did it as a kid, but then now you're like, hold on. That was really weird. Like, why the hell was I doing that? Sorry. Well, actually, when I first started writing um, and the teacher was saying, like, creative, when you do creative writing stories, I, for some reason, would take, I would mirror the... um, the white the, the board that they do the chalk on and I would always write from uh, right to left rather than writing left to right and so I kept having these tiny little quirks where I didn't like do my shoelaces up or I wouldn't use knives and forks like I had quite a few little quirks when I first was at school I was trying to write backwards like that was probably one of my weirder Weirder things. I had to keep getting reminded that you're not meant to. You're not meant to copy in a like a mirror setting to the chalkboard. You're meant to write left to right. Whoa, that is weird as AF. Like that is <laughs> weird as hell. So wait, you didn't even like you didn't realize you were doing that, or you just sort of looked at it, then you just like mirrored it straight onto your page. No, well, when they would say when they would say um, you know creative writing, I thought that that was that, that this was like kind of a way to uh, be an individual. Like I was like, Mike, I, I don't want to write the same way that everybody's writing. I want to write from right to left, right to left. And everyone was like, no. The teacher kept saying to me, I was only this is kindergarten. I'm talking. Yeah, but that's 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 just, very that's very creative yeah. for a kindergarten. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, so that was, for some reason, that's the first thing that's gone to my head to share as a, as a weird thing. <laughs> I love that. I think that is so, that is, that, I've never heard that before. That is really, that's actually, that's cool. I think, I think there's something in there that like really brings and really like shines through as you being creative right from the get-go. And it doesn't matter if it's writing from right to left instead of left to right. And, you know, who the hell says we have to write from left to right? Like who, uh, yeah. where's the rule book of saying that? <laughs> So I don't I don't know, but uh, apparently I wasn't I wasn't willing to start that way. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, one thing I did weird when I was a kid was I um I used to like um go through like my mother's um drawers and I used to take her um lipstick and then I'd run back oh, yeah. to my room and then I'd I'd eat it. Like I'd take a bite of it and eat it. But because I saw her putting it that on, makes but I sense, though. Yeah, I didn't like realize that, that she which when is, you're a yeah. kid, you can see that that would be like, is this a some kind of lolly? You know, is this like some kind of treat? Yeah, because you'd you know, wi- you know you'd colorful. wind them up, you'd wind it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that, that, like, I don't know if that's weird, but that was uh, that was one of my little. No, I mean, it's, is- it's not as creative as you know, writing from right to left, but it's 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 something, I guess. <laughs> It makes you who you are. That's, that's the beauty in all of us being so different is that we have these interesting details as, as humans in our DNA. It makes us who we are. Yeah, it really does. Uh, but there's no one like you, Delta, uh, and your new Thank music you. is incredible. It is beautiful. It is real. It is raw. It's a cleanse. It's a reset. It's, you know, we have so many different 
uh, ver- is it verbs or what? I don't know what. Describing words, they're verbs, right? That's a that's a verb. A describe. Yeah, adjectives. 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 There's a, so many. I mean, we we have cr- we've covered everything in this conversation. <laughs> Harry Potter, English classes, <laughs> childhood memories, touring, Lady Gaga. Like, come on, man, this is unbelievable. I mean, we really have. I actually haven't felt that we were on radio at all, and I probably should have checked in with myself that I wasn't just having a conversation right now. <laughs> hey, but that's what it's all about. It's all about just being comfortable and showing the real Delta, and it's so good to see uh, and like I, I think the real the, the most important message to take away from this is that uh, you're leading the way in, in reopening as much as possible as we can into the, the new norm I guess but reopening music yeah. and, and, and getting everybody sort of uh, forward looking focused on, on how we're going to be able to enjoy music in the future so you're living in the future sure. you're living in the future you're, 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 you're ahead you're ahead of the game I mean, you know, we've always got to keep moving with the times. As you know, if if you don't do it, who will? You got you got to. And we know that there's always going to be change in life. Yeah, we need more people like you, Delta. How can we do oh, that? Do you reckon we? Would you, would you would you ever allow us? Would you, <laughs> Sir Kian, <laughs> would you would you ever like opt in to have yourself cloned? Oh, I don't know if I could deal with that. <laughs> I think there's enough of me here. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. But I saw this doco the other day on YouTube, right? And it was about um, uh, Will I Am. And he was working with the same people that worked on, um, what's that movie? The Avatar. And what they're doing is they're designing this like virtual um, replicant or virtual clone of Will I Am. And it was insane no. to see. No, I, was, I swear, I, I'm 100% honest. It's on YouTube Originals. It's like a, a, a artificial intelligence. It's hosted by. Um, Who's Iron Man? What's Iron Man? Uh, Robbie, Robert Downey Jr., um, right? Yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. it's hosted by him. Um, if you, Yeah, check it out because that is crazy. And it made me think, wow, if I could clone myself but a virtual digital version of me, what could I make that digital version of me do? Like I could have myself be my own assistant. Like you could be like... That's true. That is so true. Right? And you could be like, okay, post this on my Instagram at six o'clock and you don't even have to worry and just say blah, 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 blah. And then it will do that. Or, you know, record, start recording now. Like all of a sudden you just... Start singing, you know. I'd, I'd be like, oh, my voice is a bit tired today. How about you sing, lady? You know, oh, your turn. <laughs> you see, that is it. That is perfect. Delta 2.0. Like, I mean, we we, we should make oh, it happen. And you, you, oh, you, oh, you've you worked with, with Will I Am on The Voice, right? Am I right in saying that or...? Um, well, I did spend some time with Will I Am on The Voice. Um, I wasn't on... There was the one season I did The Voice Kids. Oh, okay. So we had... Um, I had Mel B, but and uh, the the Madden Brothers. We did. That was the one year that we did Voice Kids. Oh, that's right. So there was some sort of uh, like uh, overlap there, but nothing sort of uh, too too um, close and personal where you could actually call him up and be like, "Whoa, bro! Like you're digitalizing <laughs> yourself. Like get me on that. I want to be a part of that." <laughs> I'm sure I could still ask. Like, hey, can I? Can we do some artificial? I don't know. I don't know. It scares me, but but it would be truly fascinating. These things are fascinating to me. It really is. And it gets to the point where it's like, hold on for a second. If we're going to start to do that, uh, uh, you know, where else, what else could be happening in the world at the same time as that? Like, where's technology going to be? Like, we're going to be able to, you know, connect to the internet without even having a device, just like directly from our brain. You know what I mean? Like, it's that level of just heaviness. Oh man, this is this. You I see, mean, Delta. These are, this things, is, these are things that are in the future. Like, I know. This, we know that. We know that this is like a and and there's a definite new reset. I mean, I've just been learning how to do my online. I've only. I'm just fumbling through doing online shows with the bunker down sessions. I didn't even know how to get the sound through it while whilst it was streaming in the <laughs> first couple of weeks. So so I'm just getting accustomed to learning technology. So oh, I, I think then after I do that, I'll learn to yeah. artificial intelligence. I think you've got a few steps to go before we get to the AI. I think I think that's definitely <laughs> true. Oh, wow. Delta Goodrum, you're a legend. Thank you so much for your time. You. Uh, again, Paralyze is available right now uh, everywhere. Stream it, download it, get it via an artificial intelligent Google Home, ask for it, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> Just make sure you hear Delta's new music. Make sure you check out deltagoodrum.com uh, to get those tour dates, right? Is that where we got to go? That's right. Yep, perfect. that's right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And uh, get among it. Get amongst it because this is this is uh, one of the, the best things that's going to happen to Australian music is moving forward and getting out there and, and being in the, being amongst the uh, performances and the tours. So Delta Goodrum, thank you for forward thinking. Thank you for the music. And uh, you're, you're like I said, you're, you're a legend. That's all I'm going to say. Sir 
keen, Edward Oliver. I am very grateful for your time today. <laughs> we don't have to be so formal all the time, but I will be sending you something via Al very soon. Don't worry. Okay, legend. All I'm right. For it. Thanks, Delta. I'll talk Take to you care. soon, girl. Bye.